Wicked spirit, leave this man. Leave this man. <laughs> you think this is normal, just a person <gasps> thing? It's not. Now, leave him and never return. In the name of Jesus. I see you too. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How you feel? I feel great. Is this your first time here? Uh, no. You've come here before? Uh, yes, like this is my fourth time. This is your fourth time. Jesus yeah. loved you, just set you free. Amen. Clap for Jesus. Amen. 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 You wicked spirit. <sighs> don't like you. You don't like me. I don't like you either. <laughs> I love him. You, I don't. Amen. Leave him. And never return take everything that you came with the name of jesus yeah. out out uh, no come out and never leaving him you are you are leaving him <laughs> see what i do to him watch you, you want me to watch okay let's let's see what you're going to do you see those shoes i make them on fire let's see how you're going to stay in there shoes on fire shoes on fire shoes on fire shoes on fire shoes I won't even touch you, just the shoes. Let them consume you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Fine. Huh? Fine. How are you going to fight me? You can't even fight shoes. <laughs> you see, you see how emo demons bait you emotionally. <laughs> oh, fight. Shoes on fire. <laughs> they are powerless. It is deception. Amen. You see, to get you to act emotionally. Oh, you want to fight me? And then before you know it, you got in the, an emotional battle, they get you. Deep. You're not going to do anything to him. You're going to take everything that you brought, every covenant that you have with him. You are going to leave him. Your battle is not with me, it's with Jesus. If you can overcome him, then maybe you can overcome me, but that's impossible. So leave him and never return. <laughs> Come out. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. My son, stand up. You're free. Ah, uh, you are clapping is terrible. You don't know how to appreciate God. 
<laughs> My son, come. Come, 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 come to me. Are you okay? Yeah, yeah. You feel better? Yeah, I just, I felt very angry. You felt very angry. Do you still feel angry? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it wasn't you. It's okay. It's okay. You see. You are free. Father, let your spirit be upon him. <laughs> Feel him that his life will never be the same again. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You're choking. I am choking and it's metallic taste and it's something is here. I don't know. It's not me. Look, look at me. <laughs> Come out. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You are free. Hallelujah. 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 Ah, your clapping for Jesus is so cold. Voices. <laughs> short now. What is up? Are you choking still? No, I'm better. <laughs> I'm free. You see, this is why you need power. Amen. Two years, I, I was not able to do anything. Every doctor was saying, I'm healthy. But what was holding you? Inside something, the voice. For two years. Two years. For two years. Yes. In for two years, and it took one second for this thing Hallelujah. to leave. Hallelujah. 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 So tell me again. You went to the hospital, and they could not understand what was happening to you. Lisa. Every kind of MRIs, every kind of blood work, it was stopping me. Billion emergency rooms. They couldn't tell what's going on with me, but it was not my voice, and I kept crying. I was always full of courage. I was always supportive of others. I was always raising others in the name of Jesus. All my choreographies were in the name of Jesus, and that voice just hold me tight. You see how demons are so wicked? Demons are very evil. May God punish Satan and his friends. Liver, go! In the name of Jesus, never return. From today, you are free. Amen, amen, amen. Hi. Hi. Are you okay? Yeah. What happened? I don't know. You are, you are growling. I mean, <laughs> you see, she's like blank. No idea what happened. Listen, demons are real. But Jesus is, is even realer. Amen, amen. You're going to live for Jesus, okay? I am. Uh -huh. Holy Spirit. <laughs> feel her. Yeah, Let her be yeah, feel. So right now, Mama won't be able to hear at all? No. Okay. Rose and Anisquia? Anisquia. Mama, uh, Mama Rose, you're not scared? I'm not scared. You can celebrate better. Yeah. You can celebrate Jesus. Clap better. Amen. Enjoy, Mama. 
for how long was Mama's ears like this? Years. Years. For years and years, yes. She even uh, had an operation. Or uh, ask her when she looked at me. Mm -hmm. What did she feel happened? Wakati ana kuombea. Ulihisi nini au uliona nini? Sikusikia kitu chochote. Ukuhisi kitu chochote? Okay, wewe umeona tu imekuwa sawa. Why are you crying? Because she's always worried about everybody else. Ah. Uh, and she's always praying for everyone else. But God remembered her. There is a woman that I saw in a vision. I saw a young man that looked like a brother of yours that died. And God wants to heal your heart. But I remember seeing tattoos in my vision. Maybe even, maybe your neck area, maybe, I'm not sure. Father, speak to me. Holy Spirit, speak to me. Holy Spirit, speak to me. Holy Spirit, speak. This young man was born in the early 90s, like 1990. May 1st. Sorry? May 1st, 1990. May 1st, 1990. There it is. Prophesy. Clap for Jesus. Clap for Jesus. Clap for Jesus. Do you have a tattoo on your neck? Yes, there she is. Clap for the Lord Jesus. Prophesy. But no, no, don't sit. Don't sit. Stand. Because one word is for everybody. Amen. The Lord told me that John, J, 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 or what is his name? John Darren. Prophesy! P, 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 what's the last name? P. Lapierre. Lapierre, Lapierre. Prophesy! Wow. The Lord wants you to let go of what happened. Because this has been a burden for you. Yes. And it has caused you a lot of pain and a lot of distress. Yes. The Lord wants you to let go of it. The Lord wants you to let go of the loss. The Lord wants you to let go of the loss. Everybody that is in here, if you have lost somebody that you love, trust me, I have lost almost everybody. But the Lord says, you need to let go of it. Right now, the person you're crying for is up there, wondering why the heck are you crying? <laughs> wow. If I could send you a postcard, I would tell you, miss you, don't want to be with you. Meet me up here. Amen, amen. I don't want to come down there. This word is not just for her. Attachments prevent us from entering into the promise of God. Learn to let go of people, of situations. When you let go, your hands are open to receive. Amen, amen, amen. You think you have the best, but God has ordained the best for you. Lift up your voice, say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Today I let go. Today I let go. Of hurts. Of hurts. Of the past. Of the past. Relationships. Relationships. That you took away. That you took away. Material things. Material things. That you took away. That you took away. I am okay with it, Lord. I am okay with you it, Lord. You know better. You know better. You know best. I prophesy success and more success. I receive. Increase upon increase. I receive it. Elevation upon elevation. I receive. Acceleration upon acceleration. I receive. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and begin to receive it. bless you all no matter where you are I believe that God is about to bless you increase you and transform your life forever um, this is such a precious time before God and I believe that God is about to elevate us to another dimension so that things can be different for us uh, I want you to know that as you share this God is preparing you for greatness and life in the spirit that will make you never be the same 
ever again. So let somebody know that we'll let somebody know that we'll let somebody know that the prophet is live and our lives will never be the same. I appreciate you all being here and I thank you that God is doing something new with each and every one of us and I am sure that God will bring us to the place that he has called us to be. Uh, Today I'm going to, I'm still uh, in the, the life of the inner man. We're still talking about the spirit man. Now, uh, the last time we spoke, I, put, I gave you an exercise for your inner man, and I want you to remember these lessons are simply to build you up consistently, like everything that I do is for you to know the Lord Jesus better. And as you know the Lord Jesus better, you are more effective for his kingdom. So I want you to be prepared, I want you to get a notebook, I want you to get whatever you need to get in order to get going so that Jesus will be lifted. Now, Hear me and hear me by the Spirit of God. Today I'm speaking about a very interesting subject called murky waters. And murky waters is simply water that you cannot see through. It it may be dirty, it may not be necessarily dirty, but it is water that is unpleasant because you cannot see through. An example, if you go to Santa Monica or even, even if you go to Malibu Beach, to be honest with you, Los Angeles beaches are low-key murky. You can't see through them. But it's not that they're actually bad waters. They're just murky. You can't see through them. It's, it's the way the water he is here. If you go to other places, like even just go to Big Sur or even go to Hawaii, you can see through the water. There are sections. Now, I'm speaking about murky waters uh, because you have to understand as a spiritual man and a spiritual woman, where your advantages are. Your advantage as a child of God, what promotes you spiritually, is not your prayer. It is the grace that has been given to you by God through prayer. You mature in it, but that grace has limits because what Peter was given is not what John was given. The Bible says it like this. Let everybody that prophesied prophesy according to the grace given unto them. It means prophet Lovi has a different grace than the prophet maybe next door. Are you getting what I'm saying? The issue is when you are not aware of this reality, you don't calculate your spiritual advantages. What do I mean by your spiritual advantage? There are people that God has placed on the earth to expedite and to mature your growth. Because grace can be bestowed. That's why it says grow in grace. You, if you cannot outgrow the grace that has been given to you, you need to find somebody with greater grace than you do in order for you to enter another dimension of grace. This is why the Bible says it like this and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God. It means that Jesus the man walked with a different dimension of grace. Paul said it this way, he told his spiritual sons, ye are partakers of my grace, not our grace, my grace. Right now you are who you are, not because of the grace you have, but you have now partaken of my grace. But if you look at every single person scripturally, that carried a certain amount of grace, there were always murky waters. Even our Lord Jesus was murky waters. I feel like I'm talking to myself. Even the Lord Jesus was murky waters. I I hope you're getting ready. We're about to go somewhere. Moses was murky waters. Elijah was murky waters. The issue with the church is this. The Bible says, the the Lord said it very interestingly. Listen to what the Lord Jesus said. He said, you shall know them by what? Their fruits. Why did he say you will know them by their fruits? It meant that what they do does not produce. He did not say that they won't have fruits, but he said there are fruits, you will taste it, and it will have problems. 
it will not be ripe. It will not be something that you can eat. So you will identify them by their fruit, not by their sin. Now, maybe you guys didn't get it. He did not say you will, sin is not a fruit. A fruit is a positive thing. I don't know if somebody is getting me. I feel like somebody online needs to hear me. The Bible does not say you will know them by their sin. It says you will know them by their fruit. Sin is not good, but everybody sins. Everybody falls short of the glory of God. Some more than others. So you don't know who is of God because of their sin. You know who is, you, who is being used by God, who is serving God by the quality of fruits. The quality of fruits reveal who somebody is, not their sin. Moses was a murderer. Moses was not only a murderer, Moses was somebody that came from an occultic background. I wish somebody could hear me. Moses came from an occultic background and he was also a murderer. Is somebody listening to me? So if we were going to measure what he did in his past, we would miss the fruits that Moses was bearing. Is this making sense? In order for you to recognize your spiritual advantage by who God has given you, you have to understand that you must have the capacity to look beyond murky waters. Because if you fail to look beyond murky waters, you are in trouble. Let's go to the scriptures real quick. Let's go to the scriptures real quick. John chapter 1, and I am going to read from verse 40, 43. John chapter 1, and I'm going to read from verse 43. In no way am I saying go and sin. I never said that. No one needs to tell you to do that. You already make mistakes. But by the grace of God, our mistakes are lessening because of the work of the Holy Spirit inside of us. Amen. We are trying to live a pure life. We are trying to live a life that pleases God. So God is working on us. The truth is, I'm sorry to say this, you will never be perfect. Because the day you become perfect, you become God. God will never allow that. You become perfect as God molds you, not by your own strength. Impossible. And God, Jesus did not die for us because we are holy. He did not die for us because we are righteous. But he died so that he can make us those things. So God also looked beyond murky waters in order to redeem us. Because if he measured us according to fruits that we have not even produced, nobody can stand before God. I wish somebody could hear this. John chapter 1 and I'm going to read from verse 43. John chapter 1, and I'm going to read from verse 43. Listen to this. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. And Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote of wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. I'm going to read verse uh, uh, 45 again. Philip found Nathanael, said to him, we have found him whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Do you realize that Jesus was not believed as a prophet because of the city he was born from? Yeah. Nazareth was the most loneliest city in the whole of Israel. It was sin city of Israel. It was Las Vegas of Israel. <laughs> so anything that was from Nazareth was not good. That Nathaniel looked at him and said, how can you say that the one the prophet spoke about is Jesus from Nazareth. How can anything good come out of Nazareth? You have to understand an example is this. Samson was a Nazarene. But most of the Nazarenes failed. Samson, 
Delilah got him, he cut his hair, his eyes were gouged out. He, he was not a success story. He accomplished what God wanted, but according to the Jews, he was not a success story. The house of Judah was not a success story. So if you're coming from Nazareth, you are already a failure. David was from Nazareth, but even David also had many failures. He was a murderer, he was a liar, <laughs> but God still chose him. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. So Nathaniel had doubts. He said, uh, how can anything good come out of Nazareth? This is the issue with so many of you. You miss your spiritual elevation because of the little grace that you have been bestowed, but you don't look at the quality of your fruits. The quality of fruits is determined by the grace of God bestowed on a, on a person. Not what you do. That is why Jesus said it like this. I wish people would take the words of the Lord Jesus seriously. The Lord Jesus said it this way. He said, unless you are in me and I in you, you can bear no fruits. You can do nothing. So whoever is producing high quality fruits, it means they are with Jesus more than you. Not because they pray better than you, but Jesus chose them to be closer to him more than you. I want you to understand this. This is what is killing the life of the inner man of a lot of Christians. Is somebody, I feel like I'm talking to myself. Is somebody listening to me? It is not just about bearing fruits. It is not just about bearing fruits. It's about bearing quality fruits. Is your fruit GMO or non-GMO? Is your fruit inflating people by giving them cancer? Or is your fruit giving people life and bringing them health and bringing them to be men and women that actually can save souls, change people's lives, draw people closer to God? What quality fruits are you producing? This is determined by the closeness. This is why the Lord Jesus said it this way. Jesus said it this way. Let, let, let me say it this way. Jesus saw a tree that had good leaves. We don't recognize you because your leaves are evergreen. Ah, my leaves have never gotten dry, meaning that I am always perfect. I'm always pure. The presence of green leaves doesn't mean you have produced fruit. I'll say that one more time. The presence of green leaves does not mean you have the capacity to produce fruit. There are so many people pretending to have an, a, a godly appearance, but if you actually measure their grace level, it's actually beneath. Wow. Wow. They can't deliver you. Yeah. They can't bring healing to you. Yeah. They can't give you direction that will prove to give life not only to you, but to your entire family. Your roots can be deep. Your roots can be deep. It doesn't mean you have good fruits. So Nathaniel is saying, ah, can anything good, <laughs> can anything good, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him and said to him, behold, an Israelite, indeed whom there is no deceit. Why did Jesus give him this greeting? 
Why did Jesus give him this greeting? Are you, are you sure you're here, people? Are you sure you're here? Is somebody listening to me? So the reason why Nathaniel said what he said is because Nathaniel had a pure background. He was green leaves that knew he was concerned about the history of Jesus. Just the fact he came from there, nothing good can come from there. It means he was somebody that observed certain things and he kept himself. Is somebody catching what I'm trying to say? He had observed his life. He had checked himself. He, had, he, had, he knew. The, how can this guy be really the Messiah? So Philip tells him, come and see. But when he came to Jesus, Jesus began first by telling him that he's a man that deceit cannot get him. It means he was a studied man. But Jesus did not only give him that greeting, but Jesus did something extra. Jesus showed him the grace level, but Jesus also showed him that I know you. Nathaniel said, how do you know me? Notice, Jesus said, this guy is a true Israelite who there is no deceit. Jesus described his spiritual condition. Jesus described his belief using the prophetic. And the man said, how do you know me? <laughs> Jesus answered, before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. And Nathaniel answered him, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered him, because I said I saw you under a fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than this. And he said to him, truly I say to you, you will see heaven opened and angels of God ascending and descending on the son of man. Notice, Jesus confronted his ignorance by showing him, listen, I came from Nazareth, but I'm better than you. I even know you. I even saw you sitting under a tree. Before he called you, I was observing you spiritually. And Jesus described the tree he was sitting under. You are sitting under a fig tree. The man was shocked. He said, yeah, you are the king of Israel. You are the prophet. You are the Messiah. Jesus said, calm down. You haven't seen anything yet. Notice the grace level of Jesus permitted Nathaniel to have a different experience of the same God he was keeping himself pure for. His purity did not make that God manifest himself, but he needed a man to reveal that God to him. Is somebody getting this? Is somebody listening to me? Imagine a person that has kept himself. But it was not enough. Because grace level is not measured by your Christianity. It's not measured by your spiritual life. It's measured by who you are with. The servant of Elisha had spiritual sight because of Elisha. He was protected because of Elisha, not because of him. When you begin to understand these realities, when you begin to know these truths, something within you truly begins to change. Truly begins to change. Something begins to shift. You humble yourself in order to benefit yourself. Let me show you what the Lord Jesus said. Let's go to the book of Matthew real quick. Let's go to Matthew 
chapter 11, verse 25. Chapter 11, verse 25. Matthew 11 and 25. Yes. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, mm -hmm. and hast revealed them unto babes. Notice Jesus is, is praying. He's saying, Father, I thank you that you have hidden these things. You have hidden these mysteries from people who think they are wise. And you have chosen to reveal them to actual spiritual babies, not to the wise ones, the ones that they think they are seasoned. You have chosen to hide it. And you have chosen to reveal it to this kind. Keep, keep reading. Verse 26. Uh -huh. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. Mm -hmm. All things are delivered unto me of my Father. And Notice what Jesus is saying. Let me, let, let me, you read from there. Listen to what Jesus is saying. He's saying, Father, to you it has seemed good to give me everything. Not because I was perfect, not because of anything. You saw it fit to give me everything and for me to reveal it to whoever I choose. <laughs> Jesus is saying something without somebody listening. Some people who have spiritual ears will hear it. Some people will not hear it. Jesus is speaking from his humanity. He's not speaking as God. He's saying, Father, you saw it good to hide all these things from all these guys who think they are intelligent. But you chose to give this Matthew, Nathaniel, the opportunity to receive these things. Yeah. Then he goes on to say, it made you, it was right for you. It, it felt right for you to give me everything. You see, the problem with spiritual babies but yet they think they are wise. They want to participate in qualifying people with God for what God can give them. They don't understand that God gives you something because it has pleased him, not because you have pleased him. Uh, I feel like I'm talking to myself. <laughs> God doesn't give you something because you have pleased him. He gives you something because it has pleased him to do so. Do you realize God just loves us because he loves us? Jesus died on the cross because he loves us. Not because we sent him an email. Not because we sent him a text message. Not because we cried for salvation. He just saw it and it pleased him to chastise, to kill his son in order to save us. That doesn't mean we are better than Jesus, but it pleased him. Not to punish us, but to punish him. So what pleases God is not man's justice. It is God's own way of thinking. That Jesus who is good is worthy of suffering, but you who sinned is worthy of grace. So when people want to sit down and, and determine how somebody's righteousness and purity ought to come that will determine the level of the grace and the anointing and the power given to them. I'm sorry, you have already missed God. Is somebody listening to me? Can somebody hear me? Online people, can you hear me? God doesn't even see your faults. God does things because it pleased him. You have to remember this is God's mindset, right? This is God's mindset towards humanity. When God created you, he knew everything you will do.
You were called while you were still in the world. He called us out of the world. He took us out of the world. We heard his call when we were still in the world, not when we became perfect then we heard his call. This is the mindset of human beings. People are saying there's no audio. What, what happened? Uncle Chris, are we good? So I have no idea where it cut off so that I can, I can help. Are you, are you guys here? The mindset of God is very different. Let me say this one more time. The mindset of the Lord is very different. (laughs) The mindset of the Lord God is very different. God is not tallying up your goodness in order to anoint you. The anointed that you see on the earth today were people who were pre-qualified before they came into the world. That is why the Bible says it like this. For those he foreknew, he also qualified. He also justified. Notice God is already dealing with foreknowledge. He's not dealing with what people saw you doing yesterday. He's not even dealing with what you will do next week. God is dealing with the fact that he foreknew you. He already knew the errors you will have. He already knew the successes you will have. He knew the sins that you fall into, but it still pleased him to choose you. This doesn't mean that he's condoning error, but God already decided that it is you, even with your mistakes. So the eyes of God and the ways of God are definitely not like men. So if you don't understand this, you will not understand how to receive grace that others carry. Because 99.999%, actually that's even good, 100% of the most anointed people are the most murkiest of, of them all. I'm one of them and I'm saying it. Marky Waters big time. If you look at their past, you will think that they are doing witchcraft. In fact, many times, I know people, I know people that used to come to the house, sit down at the house, ask me questions, and they didn't know that I already saw where they are. And I knew this one is not going to stay with me. That one is not going to stay. This one will be the one that will say this. And I just watched them. They ask me questions and ask me questions. I just say, keep coming. God will help you. After a few months, they'll be the first one to say, "Ah, God told me he does witchcraft. But when people are being delivered, people are being healed, they were there shouting, amen. This is the nature of men. This is the nature of men. This is the nature of men. Men want to assist God in deciding who is anointed. They want to assist God in deciding who God should anoint. They want to sit in the council of God and say, God, uh, I have also been observing Lovi Elias. Uh, He's not ready for the next level. Who are you? They will look at you and say, ah, ah, there's something weird about this guy. What did he preach that was error? Nothing. But something just doesn't sit right. So is it about you or the fruits? Jesus did not say, you will know them by when you feel like it doesn't sit right. (laughs) He didn't say you will know them by their sin. You will know them by their fruits. So Jesus is saying, Father, I thank you that you have hidden these things from those who think they are wise, but you have revealed it to the children. 
It pleased you to give me everything. Not I worked for it. It pleased you to give me everything. Please keep reading, Musa. I'm at verse 27. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Notice this. What many don't understand about grace is this. The grace I carry also carries a dimension of God that I am the only one who can reveal. And I can reveal him to whomever I choose. It's not mandatory. Do you realize Elijah did not want to reveal his God to Elisha? He anointed Elisha and wanted Elisha to remain with the grace that he was given by God. Elisha being wise, he said, no, I'm going to serve this guy. And served Elijah with everything that was in him. Chased down Elijah wherever Elijah went. Elijah told him, uh, you know, I'm leaving soon. What can I do for you? He said, I want a double portion of your spirit. He said, why are you asking such a heavy thing? Why are you asking such? The Bible says it in King James, you are asking for a hard thing. It didn't mean it is difficult to give because if you look at how he gave it to him, it was actually easy. What he meant was that, why are you asking for such a, 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 a deep thing? You know, when the Bible says, is there anything too hard for God? It is not saying that there is something hard for God. The word hard there actually means, or difficult means wonderful. Elijah was telling him, why are you asking for something so glorious? Who alerted you to ask for something like this? And then he tells him, if you see me being taken up, then what you're asking for will be yours. Then the same Elijah began to trick him to, to uh, uh, tell him, uh, I'm going to go and pray in the corner. I'll be back. Elijah's like, no, I'm coming with you. Elijah tried to dodge him until Elijah said, all right, let's go to the Jordan. I'm about to be taken. When they cross the Jordan, the chariot of fire scoops him. Elisha cries, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel. Then Elijah looked back, he said, ah, man, he saw me being taken. I have to keep my word. Took off his jacket and threw it to him. And the moment he put it on, he received what the man had. Notice, the manifestations of God Elisha experienced, he was not going to experience by himself. Your inner man benefits not just by the presence of God, but who you are with. The Bible says that God was talking to Samuel. Samuel, Samuel, Samuel couldn't hear God. He thought it was Eli calling him. And Eli is rejected by God. God doesn't want to talk to Eli anymore. God has already decided that the house of Eli is going to die. His children have disobeyed God and their father did not correct them. So he was angry with Eli and his, and his children. But God is talking to Samuel and Samuel cannot connect with God. There is something that is off. Samuel can hear Eli, his father. Because what God wants Samuel to have is something he gave to Eli. And Eli has not released it. God cannot override Eli and take it from him and give it to Samuel. He can't. So every time God comes to, 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 to Samuel, Samuel only sees Eli. Ah, uh, you guys didn't get it. So every time he will perceive God, he will perceive Eli. He will not perceive the Holy Spirit. He will not perceive the power of God. He is only hearing Eli calling him. He goes to Eli and said, Dad, did you call me? He said, no, I didn't call you. Go back to sleep. He went back to sleep. Samuel, he got up again. He went and he said, Dad, you called me. He said, no, 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 I didn't call you. Notice even the voice, the tone was exactly Eli's voice. 
Samuel was supposed to occupy the office of Eli. Can I tell you a secret about hearing the voice of God? Can I really tell you this? Uh, who, who wants to really hear this? I'm actually going to tell you something crazy. I want somebody to type, I want to hear God. I want somebody to type, I want to hear God. Mm, you're not saying it enough. Type, I want to hear God. Ah, I want somebody to type, I want to hear God. This is about to be crazy. I want to tell you why you can't hear his voice. Listen to what the Lord Jesus said. (laughs) My sheep hear what? My voice. My sheep hear what? My voice. And the voice of a stranger, they do not follow. They don't perceive it. I'm afraid to say this, but I'm going to say it. The Holy Spirit doesn't have a voice. God is the word, not a voice. When I hear the voice of God, I hear the voice of my Father. Amen. When I hear the voice of God, I hear the voice of my Father. Exactly the same. It's like he's there talking to me. <laughs> when Elisha came from the river, they saw him. They said, surely the Spirit of Elijah is upon him, not the spirit of the Lord. The dimension he was going to function in, it was God personified in Elijah. Every time Joshua heard the voice of God, he heard the voice of Moses. Every time the disciples heard the voice of God, they heard the voice of Jesus. (laughs) Ah, You guys just missed it. This is a mystery. It is not a feeling. No, there is a voice. There is an audible dimension, but it sounds like a man. (laughs) This is a weird thing. I don't know if I should, you know what? I should have never said this. We should delete this. Do you notice every time you say you had a voice, it's actually a feeling? Because you can't even describe the voice. You didn't hear a voice. God nudged your spirit. That's why you say something told me, but you can't remember the words that were used. You just knew you were not supposed to. But to hear a voice, uh, you can't hear it without a man. It doesn't work like that. So when you sit there and you're like, you're like, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, Father, speak to me clearly. Uh, we who are real prophets, we know you're wasting time because God is always clear. You have just not been initiated into a dimension. Not saying that you don't hear from God. You do. You just don't hear the voice. You have no relationship with the voice. Every day of Samuel's life, he heard the voice of Eli. God is just the word, not the voice. (laughs) 
Ah, Lord Jesus, help us. This is why Samuel looked at Saul and told Saul, eat with me. He prepared food, they ate together. He was, he had lamb that he had put together. He told his servant, remember what the piece of meat I told you to keep, bring it to me, cook it. I'm going to eat with Saul. He ate something with him. Told him, sleep. In the morning, I will give you prophetic instruction. You will go to this place. You will meet these people. You will give them this. Then when you meet the company of the prophets, the prophetic spirit will come upon you and you will prophesy. So even so, until when God rejected him, the only voice he had was the voice of who? Samuel. All his life. When God rejected him, notice that the Bible says something very interesting. He said, Samuel, uh, uh, he says, Saul tried to hear from God. He tried through dreams, he could not hear. He tried through this, he could not hear. He tried through this, he could not hear. Because the manifestation of Samuel was not coming. So when he went to find a woman with a familiar spirit, he demanded Samuel, not God. You people don't get it. These are prophetic secrets. I'm just keeping my mouth shut. I won't say anymore. In short. <laughs> true prophets who hear from, I'm not saying just true, I'm talking about a certain dimension of a prophet. Because word of knowledge is not prophecy. If you look at the way at times in service I prophesy, it's kind of strange. It is not like, and the Lord said, it's not like I feel like something. Uh, I will talk like I'm telling you a story. Like the Ethiopian uh, uh, old lady. I say, okay, I'll pray for you, but there's a spirit of death we need to counsel. I am at a funeral. I am watching people crying. People are crying. And I am seeing a man being lowered into the ground. And when this person was being lowered into the ground, the grief entered this woman because this man was either her brother or uncle. It was just, obviously I know it is the brother. I'm just talking so that you don't understand what I'm doing. Then she said, yes. I said, this is three years ago. She said, yes, yes, yes. That is her brother, her only brother died and she could not go and be there for the funeral. <laughs> Notice this is different than uh, uh, there is something happening. God is bringing a blessing. No, this is very different. It is very specific, precise to a certain particular area. It is not normal. It is not word of knowledge. Prophecy is different. Somebody has to speak to you. Let me add another uh, flavor to this. A little flavor to this, and then I think we'll cut this part off. I'll tell, I'll tell the editors to take this off. As long as this is up, I'll give it like a few hours, but I'll cut out this part. Now we can do that, right? Now we can do that on, on YouTube, right? Yeah, we're going to take that part out. But listen to this. <laughs> I'm afraid to talk because some of these things it's difficult to explain. Do you realize, are you ready for this? When God wanted to destroy, uh, what was that? I always forget his name. Ahab. God wanted him to die at Ramagilead, Right? The Bible says, and a spirit came before God. They don't tell you the identity of the spirit. And a spirit came before God and said, uh, I will go and be a lying spirit in the mouth of the prophet. Yeah. And God said, wow, go and it shall, you will succeed. Go and do it. 
you will a hundred million percent succeed. And a spirit came and presented itself, not an angel. Because the man of God, the prophet is saying, I saw the Lord sitting on his throne. Angels on his right side and angels on his left side. And they are dis- God is discussing, how can we make this guy go and die? Then a spirit came before God. Who is this spirit? Why were the prophets confident that this was God talking to them? Who was the spirit that ministered to them that to them they heard it and they knew it was God? I've left that as a mystery for you. I won't tell you. Remember, this is in, around the time of Elijah. This is around the time of who? Elijah. I'm not saying it is Elijah. This is around the time of Elijah, where there were many prophets in Israel. <laughs> God is deep. You will never experience God beyond the grace you encounter. What you have is sufficient for salvation and whatever God gives you as a gift. But there are levels and dimensions that God gave people, not because they are good, he just wanted to. It pleased him to hide it from you. That you will take a certain level of humility, a certain level of soberness in order for you to capture it. I don't care if you fast 10 years, you will never have what I have, unless I give you. I'm talking about my gift. I'm not talking about other people, I'm talking about what I have. You can't even tell God, give me what you gave him, he can't. He will not. That is why there's something called impartation. Impartation is not only because God has told me, I can love somebody so much. I can truly be pleased with somebody so much that I tell them, come, and I will lay hands on them and give them what I have, 100%. I've done it twice in my life. Only twice. Only twice. Only two times. Only two times in my life. I have done that. This is before the Lord, twice. Second Kings chapter five. Second Kings chapter five from verse one. I have a few minutes and I'm done. Second Kings Mm -hmm. chapter five Mm -hmm. and from verse one. Mm -hmm. Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, Mm -hmm. was a great man with his master, an honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. Listen to that. God had given him the power to bring deliverance. (laughs) Keep going. He was also a mighty man in valor. He was a mighty man. He was not a small man. Uh But he was a leper. But he was what? A leper. God is using him. God has given him victories. God has given him status. But he's a leper. You, you, you know, God is such a mystery. The Lord is such a mystery, children of God. The Lord is such a mystery. He's a very strange God. The Lord is such a mystery. God has blessed him anointed him, given him power to win wars. God has given him status, but God is not healing him. Do you know what a leper was in those days? To have leprosy was like having AIDS. It was like you have COVID, you will kill everybody. When you had leprosy, you are an outcast. But this guy was brought in, but he had a stigma around him. Because the presence of leprosy meant you are sinning. 
it was a, 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 a disease associated with sin. Uncleanness. You are unclean. You could not touch anything and it remains pure. It means he won wars, but he was unpure. But no, everybody still needed him because he was a great man. But he had a stigma that he was impure. Look at, the, look at how God is just contradicting people's minds. How can this unclean man be favored by God? <laughs> Big time murky waters. God has given him status. God has made him a great man. Can you start again? I want you to hear this. Yes, sir. From verse one. Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, mm -hmm. was a great man with his master and mm -hmm. honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. Notice he was an honorable man, mean that, meaning that he was a man that was a straight, upright man. He was a pure man that God even used him to give victory. It means that this man was used by God. He was an instrument of God. Great man, great status, servant of God, leprosy. Those who are spiritual know that, mm, what did you do or what did your parents do? So it means God can use you even though you are in murky waters. Those who know him internally is a pure man. But those who know him from outside, they know something is wrong. But his fruits said that God is using him. His body is saying something different. So imagine if you judged his fruits based on him and not what he produced. Somebody just type Mikey Waters. <laughs> oh Lord Jesus. God is a strange God. The Lord is a strange God. This is why revealed is such an important, um, is such an important series that we are doing. Not just series, but the whole show. This series, or, or show, I don't know why I keep saying series, but revealed the show is really important because my goal is to bring you into greater enlightenment by the Spirit of God. I want those thumbs up to go up. We are about a thousand, almost a thousand people now. Let, keep those thumbs up going up so that more people will benefit from the video. So hear me and hear me well. Hear me and hear me well. The man, it is weird. If you're with him, you get victories. But himself, you can't even touch him. There is somebody who is carrying your miracle that if your eyes are not open, you'll be afraid to touch him. Can I tell you something funny? I haven't done anything. I am what I am. You like me, you like me, you don't like me. I don't like you either. <laughs> it does nothing to me. I love you. I don't have to like you. We don't have to be best friends or anything. I'm cool. I just am what I am. Those who know me close, they know what kind of person I am. I'm the same one sitting here and I'm the same one out there. I live for the Lord. But there are people who have heard stuff from people who have never even been close to me. Don't know anything about me. That they may be sitting out there saying, uh, I don't know about that guy. He blows on people. That's witchcraft. <laughs> and you stay possessed. 
You stay diseased. You stay within limitations. Because you think that the person is stained. But actually God used that to hide him from you. To see if you are spiritually mature. And if you see him, then it means you're ready for your next level because that person carries it. So God is playing you. There's something the Lord Jesus said in the Gospels that is, uh, in the, in the Gospels that is really funny. He said this to the Israelites. He said, you fools, don't you know that God has set you up? How will you escape the day of judgment? Don't you know that God is looking for somebody to pay for the blood of the prophets that you killed, some in the temple, some in the streets. Don't you know he has sent people right now for you to kill them so that he can find somebody to punish for these things. Let me tell you about punishment. Hell is eternal damnation. But whatever you do on earth, you must reap it on earth. Yeah, he has to come back to you here on earth before you even get buried or anything. You have to go through it here. So Jesus is telling them, don't you guys see that you are set up by God? So God can set you up. If you see it, you have a breakthrough. If you don't see it, whooping. Let me go a little deeper. Let me go a little deeper. Let me go a little deeper. So the man cannot be touched. An asset of God, but nobody can touch. Keep reading, uh, Uncle Musa. Listen to this. Uh Uh-huh. And... By him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. Mm. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and brought away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid. Mm -hmm. And she waited on Naaman's wife. Mm -hmm. And she said unto her mistress, Would God, my Lord, were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. Notice this. The servant that they had said, by the way, I know somebody that can help him. He didn't say, let's pray to God. He said, I know somebody. Who do you know? So even though the man was a servant, even though the young, the, 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 the maid was a servant, she knew she had a key that his greatness, his might, could not help him. So she said to him, I know somebody who can help you. Keep going. Verse four. Mm -hmm. And one went in and told his Lord saying, thus and thus said the maid that is of the land of Israel. Mm -hmm. And the king of Syria said, go to, go and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed and took with him 10 talents of silver and 6,000 pieces of gold. And ten changes of raiment. So the man was written a recommendation letter by the king. Some of you have burnt bridges with certain people. That in your great day of need, can I be honest with you? There are certain people if they call me I will never answer. Unless God tells me I'm not answering. Yeah. You dishonor me, but when you're in need, you need my gift. Nah. Unless the Lord tells me, I'm not doing it. Jesus said, do not cast your pearls to who? Swine. Because the same person you will help them today, next week, they will be the same one that will bash you. I've seen it so many times. There are certain things I used to think it's mean. I just realized that I was the one who was immature. Jesus never gave his time to people who dishonored him. 
He didn't force himself. Jesus said to his disciples, anyone that welcomes you, leave your blessing with them. But anybody that undermines you, take your blessing with you. Notice Jesus didn't say bless them anyway. He said, no, take what is yours, go. And Jesus even went to more to say, it will be worse for them <laughs> than Sodom and Gomorrah. Then Jesus, why are you taking this so personal? Because Jesus understands the grace of somebody being given something, sent to you, and you undermine what they are carrying. Ah, uh, God doesn't take that lightly. Keep reading, watch this. So the man carried a lot of money to go to Israel. Uh -huh, keep going. Verse 6. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, Now when this letter is come unto thee, behold, I have therewith sent Naaman my servant to thee, that mm. thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. Mm. And it came to pass, when the king of Israel had read the letter, that he rent his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and to make alive, that this man doth send unto me to recover a man of his leprosy? Wherefore, consider, I pray you, and see how he seeketh a quarrel against me. So the king panicked because when the king wrote the recommendation letter, he wrote to the king saying, ah, I've been told that you have the ability to cure my guy. Do you get what I'm saying? It was not written to Elisha. It was written to the king. So the king panicked. So the grace of Elisha was the covering of Israel that the king who wrote the letter expected the king to know to have Elisha on his side. But the king wasn't even thinking like that because he was so used to prophets. Some of you, uh, I won't even so much. I've already told you something without saying something. The king started, he said, this guy is looking for war. Yeah. But he doesn't know that Elisha's grace has gone beyond the borders. He is uplifting the nation to show that the king has somebody. Israel has a deep prophet. That person is the right hand of the... That is where you find ancient cultures and even today. Some do it with dark power, some do it with witchcraft, some do it the right way. Great leaders always have spiritual people around them. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. One of my spiritual sons is, um, is one of the greatest mixed martial artists in the world. His name is John Jones. Do you realize that this guy doesn't go to a fight without me? He will call me and say, what is God saying? Wow. I'll tell him, uh, this fight, watch out for leg kicks. This guy is going to try to take out your legs. Wow. This one, watch out for this. Uh, this one, you will pull through this way. Should I sign this or no, 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 no. This one. Go with this one. <laughs> it's crazy. So the king never used Elisha as an asset. Keep going. Verse 8. And it was so, when Elisha, the man of God, had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes. Notice, how did Elisha hear? It means Elisha was in the courts. But the king was thinking of himself. He did not think about Elisha. For Elisha to know what is happening in the king's house. <laughs> that he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come now to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. Notice this. Elisha, you would think, if some of you were, read this, you would say, Elisha was so proud. Do you know how many prophets were in Israel? But Elisha is saying, tell him to come to me, you will know there is a prophet. Yes. It means he knew his dimension, other people didn't have it. He was so confident in his dimension. He said, tell him to come. Why are you tearing your clothes? Send the man to me. You will know that there is a prophet in Israel. Not there is a God in Israel. <laughs> because the prophet is the access to God. The man of God is the portal to God. 
The king also prays. He's not a pagan. But the prophet is saying, uh, let him come. You will know there is a prophet in Israel. You all know the story because of time. You all know the story. This is what happens. The man comes to him. Elisha, he comes with a little attitude. Elisha tells him, go and bathe yourself in murky waters. The Jordan is not clean waters. Dirty waters. Go and bathe yourself in murky waters. Ah, the guy was angry. He said, yo, don't we have better springs in our own country? The guy was upset he was about to leave. Not even ready to give an offering. He was upset, angry. Then his servant told him, my master, you came from that nation with all the springs that were good. It never cleansed you. You see, some of you don't keep record of all the good things you've been doing. Where did it take you? How did it benefit you? How did it benefit you? It didn't do anything for you. You were good, loved by God, but what did it produce for you? Zero. Nada. Nothing at all. Nothing. Then his servant told him, what do you have to lose? You see, some of you, you want to protect your reputation at the cost of your miracle. You want to protect your status at the cost of your miracle. You want to protect your stand in society at the cost of your miracle. Yet when you're suffering, those people who you're trying to please are not there. The people you're trying to please, they are nowhere to be found. They are just a good hangout. They have nothing to offer you. They have nothing to give you. Let me use like an example my son who is sitting here. He told me a story about how I prophesied to him towards the end of the year. And he said that he made more money than he had ever made until that point. Things just opened up like crazy. Amen. Amen. What he asked God to make, he made even way more surpassed what he thought that he should make. Amen. Right? Now you imagine somebody comes and tells you I is a false prophet. <laughs> you look at them and say, my guy, when did you ever drop a dollar in my account? You imagine, you imagine the man that I told his wife. By Wednesday, this whole court case, the jury and everybody will be confused. They will let your husband go. Yet the guy is being implicated for murder. The first time the case didn't work out. This time his own attorney, who is a great attorney, telling him, just take the plea deal, take your 19 years, because if we go to trial, you won't make it, it will be bad. A random guy says, uh, I'm prophesying to you, because your daughter touched my heart. There is a man in this envelope, I'm seeing Peter in prison. Oh yeah, it is, my husband is in prison. Take out the pictures, a man in prison. I said, my only desire is one thing. He will give his heart more to God. But not only that, I want him to come and say thank you to Jesus. Amen. And the man, a great man, by Wednesday, the whole court case goes south. First degree murder, not guilty. Second degree murder, not guilty. Manslaughter, not guilty. They were trying to get him with something, but they couldn't get him with anything. Immediately, the guy he came and gave things. Another one also, the guy was actually guilty. I told him, you, God is telling me you're guilty. Let me ask God if there is grace. God said, wash his hands. He said, as I'm putting my hands in the oil, God has washed your hands. Grab a seed of number 12. Give it. You are free. The jury is deliberating. He already knows the case is not going well. He goes back to court. Everybody says, ah, not guilty. Huh? There is a God in heaven. Yes. Yes. Amen. Deep murky waters. Somebody who doesn't understand that dimension will say, ah, this cannot be God. So you are elevating witchcraft more than God. Mm -hmm. 
Who controls the hearts of men? Is it not God? Yes. Is it not him who hardened the heart of Pharaoh and also loosened it? Yes. So anyway, the man goes, dips himself in the Jordan seven times, comes out and the man is cleansed. Now he wants to run and give a seed. Elisha refuses. See, many of you, I tell you all the time, there is nothing that annoys me like somebody thinking that because they brought a seed to church, it means I'll pray for them. I, there's nothing I hate more than that. I despise it with all my heart. I'm not poor, you know. But it's the fact that you think you can buy what God has given by grace. It doesn't work like that. I want you to go and give right now. And we'll be right back and I'll pray for you and I'll, and I'll pray for you and I'll release something upon you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let us worship and bow down For he is our God He is our God Let us make a joyful sound Unto our God Unto our God Let us worship and bow down For he is our God he is our God, let us make a joyful sound Unto our God, unto our God He's been good to us, good to us, so good He's been good to us, good to us, so If you send me, I will go My God, all to thee
This one's for the king, cause he made me This one's for my God, cause he saved me So I'ma lift your name on a daily Forever and always I will praise thee This one's for my Lord and my Savior My Yahweh, all to thee again Jesus may you reign forever Use me as you will I'ma give you prayer cause I'm breathing I don't care who say that I'm tweaking I'ma bless your next week, Jesus It don't matter noonday or the evening Monday, Tuesday or the weekend God bless you all, and, and uh, I hope you've learned something, and my desire is that you will know the Lord Jesus better than you did yesterday. Amen. God is taking us somewhere. We are a different kind of generation. We are a generation that will see the might, the power, the glory of God than any other generation, but there are some that will be so dry, drier than the bones in the valley of dry bones. Because they just are not, they are, they are woke, but they are asleep at the same time. The prayer here is this, that you'll be shifted. That is truly the prayer that I carry in my heart. This is something that I desire for you. And I know the Lord God truly, truly, truly desires it for you also. I will pray for you. I want you to listen to this again and understand that never allow for somebody to remove you from what is benefiting you. Don't be a fool, be wise. Father, I pray for your amazing people, your people whom you have blessed, whom you have raised up, whom you have caused to become the greatness and the beauty of God. Father, I pray May their eyes be open to understand what will benefit them. May they ask the right questions always. May they seek in the right places and may they knock the right door. That they will be elevated spiritually unto your glory. Father, we all have errors, but your grace has overlooked and surpassed our errors. May my grace be a benefit to them. 
may it bring them to the place not only of expectation, but also of transform, uh, also transformation. Lord, I thank you for your goodness and your kindness, and I thank you that you have done it. In Jesus' name, amen. You are so loved by the Lord, and uh, the best is yet to come. Cappuccino. <laughs> See you tomorrow. <laughs>